For over two decades, scientists have explored the idea of intelligent nanobots. Machines so small they could travel through the human body, identify disease cells, and carry out repairs at the molecular level. The concept is attractive, even seductive. Precision medicine delivered by autonomous machines, pollution removed by invisible cleaners, and new materials assembled atom by atom. But the reality has turned out to be far less promising. Despite the investment of time, talent, and funding, there are no working intelligent nanobots today, none approved for medical use, none in commercial circulation, and none capable of even basic decision-making in a complex environment like the human body. What exists are simple particles that respond passively to chemical gradients or are pushed around by magnetic fields. These are not robots in any meaningful sense. They cannot think, adapt, or perform multi-step tasks. The term intelligent nanobot is mostly marketing language. A major barrier is the sheer difficulty of operating at the nanoscale. Fluids behave differently at these dimensions. Viscosity dominates, thermal noise disrupts predictability, and chemical environments are unstable. Designing a nanoscale object that can not only move, but navigate, detect, act and stop when needed is an unsolved engineering problem. Even if such a device could be built, powering it, controlling it, and ensuring it is not attacked by the immune system are additional problems for which there are no robust solutions. Then there is the question of utility. Even if intelligent nanobots could be made, would they be more effective than current technologies? For many applications, targeted drug delivery, diagnostics, material synthesis, Existing methods, using nanoparticles, chemical carriers, or microfluidic chips, are more reliable, cheaper, and easier to scale. In other words, the use cases for nanobots are already being served by better tools. Why, then, does this research continue? In part, because of inertia. Some labs have built reputations around nanobot research. Funding bodies like Dramatic Goals and journal editors favor futuristic language. The narrative of smart nanobots fighting cancer is easier to sell than gradual improvements in nanoparticle diffusion. But behind closed doors, many researchers acknowledge that the field has reached a plateau or even a dead end. Progress is minimal, translation to real-world use remains elusive. Expectations have far outpaced results. There is value in curiosity-driven science and exploring the boundaries of what is possible should not be dismissed, but it is time to be honest. The intelligent nanobot, as popularly imagined, is likely not coming, at least not in this century. Most of the research has moved toward more practical derivatives, drug-carrying vesicles, magnetically guided particles, DNA structures that unfold under certain conditions. These may be useful, but they are not autonomous robots, and they never were. So, is the pursuit of intelligent nanobots worth it? From a practical standpoint, the answer is no, not unless radically new materials, control systems, and design frameworks are developed. At present, it is a field sustained more by vision than by viable outcomes. It may remain an inspiring idea, but it is not a technology ready to transform medicine or industry. The gap between aspiration and implementation is, for now, too wide to bridge. For more than 20 years, scientists have pursued the idea of intelligent nanobots. Nanoscale machines that could autonomously navigate the human body, diagnose illnesses, and perform repairs on cells or tissues. This vision promised transformative applications, precise medical treatment, environmental cleanup, and atomic level manufacturing. Popularized through science fiction and media, the concept drew massive funding and institutional support. The allure lay in its simplicity. Tiny machines acting as doctors, cleaners, or assemblers, all powered by inbuilt intelligence. This dream captured public imagination and scientific ambition alike, shaping an entire research direction around its potential. Research initiatives like the NIH's Nanomedicine Roadmap envisioned programmable nanomachines treating cancer with surgical precision. The intelligent nanobot was imagined as a molecular Swiss Army knife small, precise, and endlessly capable. Despite billions in investment and decades of work, there are currently no intelligent nanobots that meet even the most basic criteria for autonomy or function in complex biological settings. 
no such devices are approved for clinical use, no commercial products are available, and no prototypes can carry out multi-step reasoning or adapt to real-world medical conditions. Most so-called nanobots today are chemically responsive particles or externally controlled micromotors lacking intelligence. They do not process information, make decisions, or exhibit goal-directed behavior. Fundamental Qualities of Robotics the term intelligent nanobot remains largely aspirational and is frequently used in ways that overstate reality. Many nanobots in papers are magnetic particles that require continuous external field input and cannot operate independently. Calling these systems nanobots is like calling a paper plane an autonomous drone. It flies, but only when you throw it. Designing nanobots is profoundly difficult because the nanoscale obeys fluid dynamics and physics vastly different from our macroscopic world. Viscosity dominates motion at these scales, making movements sluggish and erratic. Thermal noise constantly agitates molecules, disrupting any attempt at predictable control. Chemical gradients are unstable, and biological fluids can corrode or deactivate nanoscale structures. Adding autonomy under these conditions motion, sensing, decision-making, and halting, is an unsolved and possibly intractable engineering challenge. Attempts to build swimming nanorobots often fail in real biological fluids, which are more complex than water-based lab environments. Operating a nanobot in the bloodstream is like trying to fly a drone through a hurricane made of molasses and invisible currents. Even if a nanobot could be engineered to move and act, it would face immediate biological resistance. The human immune system rapidly identifies and attacks foreign entities, especially particles of unfamiliar shape, charge, or surface chemistry. Additionally, clearance mechanisms like the liver and kidneys remove nanoparticles from circulation before they can perform their tasks. Building in stealth, endurance, and specific targeting increases complexity to the point of impracticality. These biological challenges create a moving target that current designs have yet to meaningfully overcome. Pegulated nanoparticles extend circulation time, but even these are eventually cleared and can trigger immune responses. A nanobot in the bloodstream is like a spy parachuting into enemy territory with every radar dish pointed at it, even assuming the creation of autonomous nanobots. It is unclear whether they would outperform current technologies. Nanoparticles, liposomes, and microfluidic systems already provide targeted drug delivery, diagnostics, and chemical synthesis with greater reliability and scalability. These systems are cheaper, easier to manufacture, and can be controlled precisely without the complexity of autonomy. In many domains, existing tools have met or exceeded the goals originally set for nanobots. Thus, the marginal benefit of achieving intelligence at the nanoscale appears questionable from a practical standpoint. mRNA COVID-19 vaccines use lipid nanoparticles to deliver genetic material effectively without the need for robotic delivery systems. Insisting on using intelligent nanobots for drug delivery is like using a self-driving tank to deliver a pizza, unnecessarily complex and expensive. Despite minimal tangible results, nanobot research continues sustained by institutional momentum, funding incentives, and appealing narratives. Laboratories that built their identities around futuristic nanobot work are incentivized to keep publishing and applying for grants. Funding bodies are drawn to bold, dramatic goals over incremental advances, while journals prefer headlines that promise revolutionary breakthroughs. This environment encourages exaggeration of capabilities and underreporting of failures. As a result, much of the field's continuation is driven more by career preservation and storytelling than by verifiable progress. Grant applications often highlight targeted nanobot cancer therapies, while the actual research involves passive particles and test tubes. The field is like a theatrical production kept alive by enthusiastic ticket sales, even as the stage remains unfinished. Privately, many researchers acknowledge that the field has reached a plateau there has been little progress in the core challenges autonomous navigation, sensing, logic, and therapeutic action in vivo. Most papers now focus on minor improvements in propulsion or on rebranding nanoparticle systems as nanobots. Translational applications remain elusive 
and no intelligent nanobot has passed even early clinical trials. <clears throat> the gap between the vision and technological readiness continues to widen. Reviews in high-impact journals now cautiously refer to nanobot-inspired systems rather than actual autonomous nanorobots. The field is like a mountain climber stuck halfway up a cliff, unable to ascend but unwilling to admit retreat. While intelligent nanobots have not materialized, the research has led to useful spin-offs and practical tools. Drug-carrying vesicles, DNA origami structures, and magnetically guided particles have emerged as robust systems with tangible applications. These tools perform limited functions, such as cargo release or shape change in response to stimuli, but lack autonomy or intelligence. Nonetheless, they benefit from the manufacturing insights, material science, and microfabrication techniques pioneered by nanobot research. This redirection toward functional simplicity has yielded more results than pursuit of full intelligence. DNA nanomachines that open under specific pH or enzyme conditions are now used for smart drug release in cancer environments. Instead of building humanoid robots, the field has created useful screwdrivers and levers humble but effective. Pursuing intelligent nanobots remains scientifically stimulating, but practically it appears no longer justifiable without foundational breakthroughs in materials, computation, and control. The technological barriers are steep and alternative solutions already exist for many target applications. Without a radical rethinking of design paradigms, perhaps inspired by biological nanomachines like enzymes, the dream may remain just that. Curiosity-driven research should continue, but it must be accompanied by honest expectations and transparent communication. As it stands, the intelligent nanobot is more of a symbolic aspiration than an imminent technology. Most active development today focuses on enhancing existing nanoparticle platforms rather than building autonomous molecular agents. Chasing intelligent nanobots today is like aiming to build warp drives before inventing the internal combustion engine. Visionary, but premature.